top of the morning to you. This is a uh, radio manufacturer's engineer's uh, model 69. It's really a cool receiver. I got this. I lucked out and got this at a uh, state sale yesterday. Friend uh, kind of hit me to the fact that. Uh, He's, somehow he knew that uh, this estate sale was going on ahead of time. I don't know if it was a family member or acquaintance or some, but somehow. Anyway, he said they had a whole bunch of soldering irons in a box, and he knows I'm kind of a soldering iron, I don't know, collector, repair, nutball. And he mentioned that they had a whole bunch of them in there for $4. Well, actually, he told me $8. And I got there. So just for fun, I got up bright and early, um, got my button gear and got over there and actually stood in line at the door, which I usually don't do too often, and kind of BS with some of the other people that were there, made a couple new friends, which is always good, and uh, uh, got in the door there and uh, went downstairs. Apparently this... Uh, gentleman that had lived there must have been interested in ham radio. He had quite a bit of ham radio stuff, kind of bits and pieces. I got some pretty good trinkets. Anyway, they had this in the corner there. They didn't want very much for it. And uh, when I got a hold of it, there was no name on it. Um, there are no names on the controls. And apparently it's manufactured that way. The only, I mean, there, there's nothing on any of the controls. You're just supposed to know how this works. <laughs> Which is kind of interesting. I'll go through this later. Anyway, this is kind of a, I don't know, unboxing or preliminary. Originally this radio had these caps kludged in here. Well, let me pan up a little bit. And uh, you can see those two posts there, those Binding post. They were two caps there and they were hooked to this wire. And then this cap was down lower down here. Right there. Um, that's actually the bypass cap for the audio section. This thing is pretty old. It was made in the 30s. It uses all six pin tubes and it has like a, uh, a 42 for an audio output. It's really a very nicely made receiver. What little information I could find about it sounds like that a couple of people that were big into amateur radio were building these and apparently this is one of their more popular ones there also apparently is a matching speaker which I didn't see there at the at the sale which is too bad It'd be nice to have the speaker although it doesn't look like anything special actually this has a really nice it has a really nice meter and uh, this thing actually has a lot of controls. It's apparently got some kind of bandpass filtering, and it's got some weird features. Um, a couple of them kind of caught me off guard, like the audio control has a... You pull it out, and it mutes the thing. It's kind of a kludgy way to mute the thing, but it does mute it. Um, it's... The volume control is just a volume control. This is actually sets the zero on the uh, the S meter. This is some sort of antenna trim. Hmm. Well, apparently the station I was listening to, it's time for them to drift away. It was a shortwave. It actually was kind of interesting. It was a shortwave program with country music. And uh, it was CDM. I don't know, I kind of listened to it on and off. I'll have to find something new to listen to now. This is really a pretty nice receiver. It, the top part of it is really well shielded. And uh, it uses really old components, old paper caps and dog bone resistors. And amazingly enough, it hasn't been bodged or... Anyway, I thought it was kind of interesting. I, I, I started by... I noticed this cap, I was looking at it with a magnifying glass. I noticed that it, uh, let me back up here a little bit, uh, we'll get a handy dandy pointer, 
I noticed that this cab, this is like a Sanyo electrolytic, and I noticed it right there. See that there? It's puffed up, and it's been leaking, which I think is ironically funny. This receiver is built in the 30s, and this cap was probably eh, from the 70s, and the cap from the 70s has failed, and the cap from the 30s is still going strong. I'm not sure why. I don't know if somebody just bodged those in there from uh, kind of a habit. So just for fun, that didn't do anything. I checked it. I might dislocate the, or disconnect that wire and see if that cap has really dried up. It appears to be okay. Uh, just for fun, I took these two out of the power supply, and they've got the same problem. Right there, you see that crack? And the other one here, uh, right there. And I took all these caps out, and this receiver sounds just fine. Interestingly enough, the, uh, I found a kind of a really bad schematic diagram with this thing. I haven't found any owner's information. Um, there may not have been any. Anyway, uh, I discovered that uh, the original capacitance for the power supply of this thing is quite low. I think it was four or eight microfarad in the power supply. It, it, although it does have a lot of chokes, which is, uh, I guess that makes that a Pi network. Uh, those those types of power supplies are always pretty quiet the time with the swinging chokes or the filter chokes in them, so they don't need a lot of capacitance. If this thing's pretty quiet. I was going to uh, see if I could tune up something else here. I brought this up with a Variac. And uh, I use an old Simpson uh, volt watt meter, and I usually just start at zero volts and just slowly bring these up. Um, the minute I see a little light out of the uh, the dial lights or any or the filaments, I usually stop and back up a little bit and let them sit and perk for an hour or two, and just kind of sit there and idle. And then I usually monitor the power supply voltage. And you just slowly bring them up little bits at a time and 99% of the time unless somebody's just plugged these in and blasted them um, they come back to life a lot of guys replace those filter caps which is probably not a bad practice but a lot of times if you're careful these things come back to life uh, usually those filter caps really only ever go bad unless uh, you just blast them after they've sat for 10 years or they've totally dried up interestingly enough a lot of them I've torn apart over the years, or I still have the electrolytic uh, fluid in them. They aren't bad, they're just, uh, you know, they've got shorts in them and they're just, over, you know, wearing out that way. So it's kind of interesting. I'm going to see if I can find something here. Let me shut you off and retune this.